Uh, well, actually, I wonder why Mr. Fitem has decided to raise this subject now, literally out of the blue. It's uh, a subject that has been on a fairly low key. Um, it hasn't been hitting the headlines. The incursions we're having now have nothing to do with fishing. They're possibly even more serious than that. And suddenly, Mr. Fitem decides to raise this subject. I mean, I don't know uh, whether he realizes that this could then be heard by our friends across the way and we could start a whole load of, of, of fishing problems again when it had gone quiet. Either he hasn't realized or he's done it with perhaps that kind of intention. I, I don't know. Either of those is certainly something that worries me uh, coming from somebody who, who, who wants to, to progress in political life. Um, the fact is that uh, we are, we've made huge inroads in the regulating of our seas over the last year particularly, uh, and um, I think that uh, we're on the right track uh, for the long-term vision of good management of Gibraltar's waters. But nevertheless, it is two years since the amendment to the Nature Protection Act that paved the way, so to speak, for the introduction of these regulations. Why is it taking so long to publish them? Well, again, this is Mr. Featon's assumption that uh, an amendment that we introduced two years ago, which uh, allowed for regulations, but they did not necessarily allow for the kind of regulations that now he says that we intended to do. And in any case, two years is a long time in, in, in the natural world. And this is why I think it's important that people in government should understand what nature is about. What was happening in the sea two years ago and the level of fish stocks and the level of protection two years ago and now and in a year's time are completely different. These things have to be dealt with in a dynamic way and um, so we cannot be held to what Mr. Fitam's assumption was that we were going to do two years ago. It's just nonsensical. So do I take it from that that the government is no longer going to introduce regulations that will make it obligatory for Spanish fishermen to get a permit to fish in Gibraltar waters? Well, no, at the moment we have regulations which cover recreational fishing, fishing from the sea, uh, on boats, uh, with lines, fishing from land. And if people will remember how we were like just a year ago with the number of non-resident fishermen taking up the whole of the shoreline, we've solved that problem. We now have non-residents coming to Gibraltar to ask and take local fishing licenses for, for uh, angling. And this is a huge step forward. Um, so obviously we're we're making huge inroads and improving the whole situation in ways that were absolutely unheard of just a few years ago. But so I think we've done the right thing. But why the evasiveness? Why isn't it a, a simple answer? It's either you're going to do it or you're not. Are you going to introduce regulations? Is the government going to introduce regulations in order uh, to enable fishing with nets uh, EU compliant as opposed to fishing with nets in Gibraltar? Or are you not going to do that? Well, at this point in time in this uh, legislature, clearly we are not. Um, and as I say, things change. Uh, the, the, the whole reason for the Nature Protection Act back in 1991 was to respond to a huge overfishing that there was at the time when the fishing fleet numbered hundreds and not just tens. Um, and, and it was in order to protect fish stocks. It now seems that uh, Mr. Fitam, who completely protected or defended the 1999 fishing agreement, uh, to the hilt is now clearly throwing that out. So obviously he agrees with our interpretation because now he's saying that he's going to use a certain closed season. I don't know what advice he has, what he knows about the what closed season, when, where, how. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't think that he has the depth of, of knowledge of the subject. Um, but in any case, as time develops, we now have uh, fishing exclusion zones in, 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 for example, in the in the Rosier area where fish stocks are increasing. Uh, in other areas, uh, fish stocks are still uh, under pressure for different reasons. We are monitoring all this. We are gathering the information, and decisions in this government will be taken on an evidence-based uh, approach. So we will need any uh, scientific information before we decide what else we do. And th the time will come when we take the decisions that we need to take. Okay, so we have it from you now in this interview that the regulations will not be introduced in this legislature. And from this last answer you've given, it may also be that they will not be introduced in the next legislature if you win the election either. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is that a decision of a nature that uh, is dealing with a natural system have to be dealt with on the evidence available at the time. And I will commit myself to doing the right thing at the right time, which is something that I've tended to do all my life. Okay, I suppose that one thing that the electorates will, will be a little bit skeptical about is 
whatever you may say, whatever the GSOP Liberals may say in their manifesto on this particular issue, because in the 2011 election you clearly said, and I can quote from it, that you do not believe it is right to allow illegal fishing in our waters and we will stop this immediately. And of course you haven't done that because fishing is continuing. Well, I, I, I wonder. We have done a great deal of work in stopping illegal fishing. Clearly the police, as we've always said, have to determine what action they take. We did away with the fishing agreement. I think things have settled down. I think that we, the new regulations that we've introduced have already introduced the flavor of, of how we've got to uh, manage our seas in, in, in the proper way. So I think we have kept to, to our manifesto commitment in a developing way and we are adding to the information that we have so that we're able to deal with this better in the future. How can you say that you've kept your manifesto commitment if clearly fishing is still carrying on? People see it, people are commenting about it, it's on social networks, yes, it's yes. not stopped, yeah, it's yes. still going on. See, the interesting thing, in any protected area, anywhere in the world, from the Cota Doñana in Spain to the Serengeti, people are going to uh, poach. People are going to, uh, in, in certain cases you call it poaching, in other cases you call it fishing, whatever. So that is going to happen, and it's a question of managing it. What I completely reject is that there is now more illegal fishing than there has ever been. That but is absolutely not the case. That is not, there I think, what the, the allegation that the opposition is making yeah. is not necessarily that there's more, but that there is some, whatever no. measure there is, and that therefore you have not committed, you have not fulfilled your manifesto commitment, which was, and I quote, look, to stop it look, immediately. I could make a manifesto commitment to make sure that there's no speeding in any of the roads in Gibraltar. Sadly, no matter how hard I try, there's going to be speeding in the roads of Gibraltar. We are going to try and stop speeding. Um, and this is exactly the same situation. I am convinced that the strategy we have taken is a responsible one. It's a step-by-step -step strategy. We are controlling the, the use of the sea much better than has ever been dreamt of before. And there's a lot more to come in a responsible way based on evidence and not just on political speculation. In retrospect, does the government regret having said that it was going to, in the first place, stop fishing immediately, when obviously that hasn't happened, and in the second place to say that it was going to introduce these fishing regulations when it now transpires that it may not happen at all? Uh, in retrospect, the government regrets nothing. In retrospect, uh, the, uh, I, I, I take issue with the assumptions you have made, which I've already answered. I don't think I've, I've got to go through that again. I think that we have acted tremendously responsibly. There's always room for improvement in anything that you do, and I'm the first one uh, to admit that, but we are heading in the right direction. We now, for example, and, and, and you ask how laws are going to develop, we now have a working group of stakeholders, which include a whole range of people who use the sea, and they are the people who will advise on how we deal with this in the future. We are now listening to the users of the sea. We, I meet with them virtually every month, and that is where these decisions have to come in the future, not depending on what Mr. Feetham says or Mr. Feetham surmises or Mr. Feetham speculates.